Hello friends, it's me, Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the Plaza Hotel here in downtown Las Vegas, where I'm going to Hash House of Go-Go. Really happy to have you along, I'll see you inside. All right, everyone, and here I am seated at Hash House of Go-Go at the Plaza Las Vegas. Now, the last time I went to a Hash House of Go-Go was over at the Link, and this was several, several years ago. Even, And I recall enjoying my breakfast then, but I'm here for dinner tonight, and hopefully it's good. I've never eaten at the Plaza location, but it's a very nice atmosphere. The theme here at Hash House of Go-Go is twisted farmhouse food, and they definitely portray that in the architecture and furniture. A farm-themed restaurant with full booths as well as tables for seating. Very well lit. A nice and inviting restaurant in here. A great vibe. Regardless of the vibe, though you know it's all about the food for me so let's take a look at what they have to eat on the menu alrighty so we'll start with the drinks here uh, feel free to take a pause in the video if I can take a closer look at these drinks we have soft drinks at the top they serve Pepsi products some signature coffee beverages here that looks very nice and some twisted lemonades as well as iced teas and juices here and as mentioned they have uh, Pepsi products you can actually grab some really cool swag here, apparently. Flipping the page, here are some additional signature drinks. Looks like uh, they have a BLT Bloody Mary. That's pretty interesting. Uh, let's see here. Mimosas as well as margaritas. And uh, some specialty cocktails over here as well. And the beer list as well as the wine list. Let me get you out of the glare here. The beer list and the wine list is down here. And those are your beverages at the Hash House of Go-Go. Now it is a work night, so no drinking today, just a Diet Pepsi. Let's see what they have to eat next. And here is your menu at Hash House of Go-Go. Let's start with the appetizers here. We've got bacon, 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 as well as fried zucchini sticks, Hash House mac and cheese, as well as buffalo wings. So only four appetizers. I think I'll probably end up getting them all today then. Here are some sandwiches. Uh, you can twist your dish with avocado, bacon, different options here. They also have a uh, fish and chips. Here's your list of salads as well as dessert. Just two salads here, a Caesar and a Cobb. Here are your mains. You have a pot roast dinner, skillet chicken, lemon chicken, salmon, country fried steak. That looks really good. And then you have burgers here as well. Uh, several different types of burgers. You can also kind of make your own. And then the uh, world famous sage fried chicken and waffles. This is what I had the one time I have been to the link and I do recall uh, enjoying it then. Flipping over the page, you can see here uh, those more of these breakfast foods. I think a lot of this has already kind of been covered um, in previous uh, or in a lot of videos I've seen rather. But yeah, hashes and scrambles. We have some uh, the chicken eggs Benedict here. That looks pretty good. Basic two egg breakfast. And then that rounds out the menu here at Hash House of Go Go. Twisted farm food menu here at Hash House of Go Go. A lot of options I'm looking forward to trying today, and you know how it goes in my videos. Every restaurant is a buffet if you're willing to pay. So I'm gonna get a nice variety, and together we'll see what Hash House of Go Go is all about. Appetizer coming up first. I'll see you in a little bit when they arrive. And welcome back everyone. Our appetizer just got here. This is looking interesting. Let me give you a view. Because they only have four appetizer options, like all four, we started with the bacon, 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 as well as their mac and cheese, their chicken wings, and their zucchini sticks. I'm really hungry and looking forward to this. Let's give it a try. First off, bacon, bacon, bacon. It's literally a plate of three bacon, so I guess the name makes sense. And picking this up, it's a little bit sticky, so I imagine it has some kind of a sweet sauce to it. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, not bad. A nice little strip of bacon here, although if you're a frequent watcher of the channel, you know I'm more of a fan of crispier bacon, and this certainly has a much more softer chew. The fat has been nicely rendered though, it's still pretty soft, and so it is easy to eat. A nice salty and smoky flavor from that bacon, but the sweetness that most likely comes from brown sugar hits right in the middle of the bite, and it's there till the very end. You have a nice peppery aftertaste, nice amount of black pepper here, but at the end of the day, it is still three pieces of bacon for $12. Not sure if I would get this again. Next up, mac and cheese. This is a really big bowl of mac and cheese, actually. I'm not sure if the camera angle does it justice. Now, I am joined by a friend, so they did include two tablespoons here, so I'm sure you could kind of imagine the size. Let's see how it is here at Hash House of Go-Go. Yes, that's good. 
This is a really nice mac and cheese. A little more well done than al dente, but it's still a very firm noodle. I really like to chew here. Nice additional texture coming from the toasted breadcrumbs, giving a little bit of additional crunch. This is fun to eat. I gotta say, I really like this cheese sauce. It's not super salty. It's actually much more buttery and very rich. And the cheese flavor is much more mild, not too sharp. I actually really like this. After a couple of bites, it does start getting a little bit heavy. Not a bad mac and cheese though, that's pretty good. Next up, I'll go in on the fried zucchini. Nice plate of fried zucchini sticks here. I'll get it dipped in the ranch. Let's see how this is. And anyway, not bad. A super crunchy and crispy exterior. I really like the fry job on this batter. Not only does it have a great texture, but it does have great flavor, well seasoned with a bit of a floral note coming from the herbs here. Now the zucchini inside, unfortunately, is quite mushy. I'd appreciate a much more firm texture to this. More than likely, not enough water has been extracted out, and so the texture leaves a lot to be desired. The flavor of the zucchini is also a bit lost here. Mostly, I'm just getting the batter. It's a good thing the batter tastes great. A nice cooling ranch flavor is always welcome on anything fried in my book. Working well here, a pretty decent zucchini stick. All right, my friends, and the last appetizer I'm going in on today are gonna be the hot wing. I love a good chicken wing. I'm gonna dip it into some ranch here. Let's see how this is. Yeah, it's pretty good. A nicely fried wing here, a good meaty chew to it, and it's still relatively moist in the center. It's been well seasoned. You can actually taste the chicken meat. That is quite good. I think the buffalo sauce is okay. It's certainly not spicy at all. It's very, very mild. And so the amount of tang that you get from the vinegar feels a little bit overpowering because it's not balancing against a lot of spice. Of course though, the ranch dressing here is the great equalizer, giving a nice tangy cooling overall. Not a bad chicken wing. I think I would prefer a much more spicy sauce though. All right, my friends, now that's all the appetizers I'm trying today. My buddy and I are gonna continue working on this and then we'll go in our first round of entrees. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, it's time for our first round of entrees. And with the first round, I decided to go in on a lot of handhelds. Let me give you a view. I got their bacon avocado cheeseburger, as well as a meatloaf sandwich, a Nashville hot chicken sandwich, as well as their fish and chips. It's looking really good, let's give it a try. First off, the bacon avocado cheeseburger. A nice big hefty burger here. And I can always appreciate a nice juicy burger. Let's see how it is here at Hash House of Go-Go. Yeah, that's good. This is a super pillowy soft bun. I really appreciate the texture. Nice and rich, there's a butter layer on top. And a mildly sweet flavor, though relatively neutral. This is a nice burger bun here. A nice creamy richness coming from the avocado and a smoky salinity from the bacon. The burger was cooked medium well, although it's a tad on the dry side, it was well seasoned. And I do like the vegetables here on this burger. A nice ripe tomato, a fair amount of bite coming from those raw onions, as well as a freshness from the lettuce. All of that is pretty good. I do think this burger could use some kind of a sauce, just a little bit of additional moisture would be nice here, especially given that the burger patty was a tad on the dry side. But all in all, this is a pretty classic standard tasting cheeseburger with that avocado richness. It is good. Not a bad cheeseburger here. Okie dokie, next up, let's do the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. This sandwich is served open face on Texas toast, along with long sliced pickles. There's an incredibly spicy aroma coming off of this. Here's the Nashville hot chicken sandwich. Unfortunately, I can't say I'm a big fan of this one. Let's start with some of the good. A very rich and buttery Texas toast here. Nice crispy toast on the outside with a relatively soft center. I do really like this Texas toast. Now, the chicken has been fried well, an excellent crunch to this, and the meat inside was tender and relatively juicy. Now, my biggest issue with the sandwich is that the Nashville hot oil is incredibly hot. This is a much more spicy dish than a standard person would appreciate. This is not an approachable spice level at all. I'm actually sweating quite a bit from the heat. There is a lot of cayenne in this recipe as well as other spices. And especially given that it's coming in oil form, that's really coating to my mouth, extending the spice that I'm experiencing. Once you get to the spicy portion of the bite in the middle, it really is relentless all the way through the end. There's no respite here at all from it. I think this is far more spicy spicy than the average consumer would appreciate. Although if you're super into spicy foods, you're gonna like this a lot. Okie doke, next up we'll do the fish and chips. I'll dip this into the tartar sauce here. And here's the fish and chips. Yeah, that's pretty good. A fairly well executed fried fish here. You have a nice crispy exterior. The batter has been nicely fried. Although it is a tad on the oily side, it has been well seasoned and it does taste good. A mild fish flavor, I'm pretty sure this is a codfish. And it is flaky and firm, although not as well seasoned as the batter. I think that fish flavor could come through just a little bit more. 
Now, interestingly, I don't think this is tartar sauce. I think they're using ranch dressing here. And it's not bad, just not what I was expecting. It certainly still goes well with fried fish. It's rich and creamy, but just a little bit of additional tang would be welcome, especially on a fried fish. But I'm still going in, so it can't be that bad. A perfectly fine fried fish here. Now that was the first half of the equation when it comes to fish and chips. Here's the other half. These are the seasoned french fries. Now these fries are coming with all of these handhelds. You do have the option to upgrade to sweet potato fries, which is what I did for the meatloaf sandwich. Let's see how these fries are here at the Hash House of Go Go. Yes, that's actually really good. I really like the french fries here at Hash House of Go Go. A wonderful fry job. Super crispy exterior, very pillowy center, with a nice starchy flavor here. Good french fry. They've added some potato starch on the exterior, providing an additional crunch. I love that particular technique. And a very smoky seasoning blend. I love the use of smoked paprika here, really giving a little extra depth to the flavor of the french fry. It's quite good. A very nice french fry here at Hash House of Gogo. I like that. Now the fish and chips also come with some coleslaw. Let's see how this is. Yeah, that's not bad. Fresh cabbage is used in the slaw, a nice freshness here, and a good crisp. You definitely get a little bit of the natural sweetness of the carrots. That's all working well. A very creamy and rich coleslaw here. I do like the amount of mayonnaise in this dressing. And a little bit of an emphasis on black pepper, providing a bit of kick. And a nice amount of vinegar, providing tang. I think this recipe is definitely lacking sugar. There's a little bit of an imbalance when it comes to that tang. Just a little bit of additional sweetness would definitely help ground this more. Certainly still not a bad coleslaw, though. All right, my friends, and the last entree I'm trying for this first round is gonna be the meatloaf sandwich. I believe this was listed on the menu as the Kokomo and then served on some really thick toast. Let's see how the meatloaf sandwich is. Oh, that is really good. Okay, I really like the sandwich. First, starting with the toast. Super thick cut, a bit of a more rich toast here. It's been well buttered, well toasted, and it's got great structure holding up to the weight of the sandwich well. The thick cut meatloaf in the sandwich is so good. Incredibly meaty, a nice ratio of breadcrumbs to meat here, and it's been cooked so well. Nice toasted edges on this meatloaf provide a little bit of an additional smoky flavor, and it's been wonderfully seasoned. Nice amounts of salt, pepper, garlic in this meatloaf. Some roasted tomatoes provide a nice sweetness here, and you have a very mild cheese, which I believe is mozzarella, providing an additional richness. It all comes together very well. I'm a huge fan of the meatloaf sandwich. This is good. And the last side to try today is gonna be the sweet potato fries. Let's see how these are. Yeah, those are good. Pretty straightforward sweet potato fries here. A nice crunch, a little bit more of a dense center, and also a bit on the oily side. That said, I love the natural sweetness of these sweet potatoes. It absolutely makes its way known in the bite. And they've also been seasoned with something like a garlic salt, providing a little bit of an additional savory note. All in all, these are very tasty. I do like the sweet potato fries. All right, everyone, now that's the first round of entrees. A few more bites, we're gonna box this all up to go, and then we'll go in our second round. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. And welcome back everyone, it's time for our second round of entree. With my second round, I decided to go in on a lot of their favorites. We had to get those chicken and waffles, as well as the lemon chicken, some chicken fried steak, and their pot roast. A lot of great looking options here, let's give them a try. First up, we'll go in on the pot roast. It's been a really long time since I've had a pot roast. This is served with onion crisps, as well as mashed potatoes, green beans, and carrots. We've got a nice amount on the fork here. Let's give it a shot. Oh, that is really good. Ultra tender pot roast here. These cute pieces of beef are so incredibly soft, so incredibly tender, absolutely melt in your mouth. I love the cook. Still a very savory beef, it's been well seasoned. Fortified further by the savory and deep flavor from the gravy here. A well seasoned beef gravy provides a lot of additional depth, which is perfect because it's also helping out a lot with these mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes are incredibly creamy and rich, but it is nice how well the flavors go along with that gravy. An additional texture here coming from the fried onions, it's really good. Well seasoned with a nice little crispy element. It all goes together so well in the bite. I actually really like that pot roast, this is good. Next up, chicken fried steak. A good American breakfast spot has to have a great chicken fried steak. And I'm already loving the look of the gravy. So hopefully the chicken fried steak is good. Let's see how it is. Mm. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. Not exactly the most crispy skin here, but more than likely that's due to it being smothered in this gravy for a bit. I will admit, I actually really like the flavor of the gravy here. It's very thick, very rich, and it has a bit of a nutty flavor. This is a nice pan gravy using some very flavorful drippings. It is quite on the rich side. There's a lot of butter at work here. And smoky bits of sausage and ham are also in this gravy, providing additional salinity and flavor. The beef in the country fried steak is quite tender, although in general, I don't think I'm tasting too much of the country fried steak. I'm really just tasting the gravy. And if that was gonna be the case, I would certainly appreciate a little bit more texture from that country fried steak. But at the end of the day, at least the gravy was really good. Not a bad country fried steak here. Next up, we'll go in on the lemon chicken. This lemon chicken is served alongside some kind of a dipping sauce. We'll give it a dip here. Let's see how it is. I've got some mixed feelings on this one. Now, I actually really do like the chicken. It's been prepared well. Grilled chicken has a propensity to be dry, but they've actually done a great cook on this. Nice, moist chicken, relatively tender bite. It is good. The chicken itself has been well seasoned. You definitely get the flavor of the bird here. All of that is fine. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this lemon vinaigrette sauce. It feels very unbalanced to me. It's very rich. It's obviously based on some kind of an olive oil. There's a bit of a brininess to it, which unfortunately doesn't jive too well with the amount of lemon and acid that they've added to this. There's something like mint as well as some coriander in here. It's almost kind of like a Greek influence, but for me, unfortunately, it's not very well balanced. It's really acidic. And unfortunately, when applied to the chicken, it is quite overpowering. I think I'd be perfectly fine with just the chicken breast, to be honest with you. All right, my friends, now the last dish I'm trying here today is gonna be Andy's famous chicken and waffles. This is a dish that's probably most associated with Hash House A Go-Go, and this was the one dish I tried myself many, many years ago, and I remember enjoying it. Let's see how this is. Yeah, that's actually really good. This is still a very tasty dish. All of the elements individually are already pretty great. This is a fantastic fried chicken, ultra crispy exterior, great fry job on that batter. It's well seasoned, chicken meat in the center is juicy. The chicken on its own is already so good. The seasoning blend here is really nice. Not only do you have your usual suspects like salt and pepper, garlic and onion, but there's also just a little bit of five spice giving a bit of an Asian element to it. It's very subtle, but noticeable if you're looking for it. And it's very good. Really nice waffles here. A nicely sweet waffle, crispy on the outside and cakey in the center. But what's really nice about these waffles is that they've also included a layer of bacon in the middle. While you're enjoying the nutty sweetness of the waffle, you're then treated to that smoky salinity from the bacon. This all comes together so nice. The fried leeks also provide a bit of a nutty flavor, and it all rounds out nicely with the added syrup that I've applied. This is just a really great balance of sweet and savory, with some nice complex layers, especially when it comes to the seasoning blend of this fried chicken. I recall liking this a lot in the past, and I still do today. I can totally see why this is their signature dish. It's a good one. All right, my friends, now that's all of the food I'm trying today. I am super stuffed, so just a few more bites. My friend and I are going to box this all up to go, and then we'll do a little bit of dessert next. Don't go anywhere, because sweets are coming up. And welcome back everyone, my dessert just got here. This is looking really good, let me give you a view. We got their cinnamon churro waffle. It's topped with ice cream and whipped cream, as well as caramel. Uh, I've got a nice mix of everything on the fork here. And I am so full, but there's always a little bit of room for some sweets, right? Let's activate the dessert stomach and give this a shot. Oh, that is very tasty. This is a very enjoyable dessert. A nice texture to the waffle, although a little bit less crispy, much more cakey here. A natural nutty sweetness to it. The waffle here is still great. Covered in cinnamon sugar as well as caramel, you absolutely get that churro influence here. And a very sweet and rich vanilla ice cream that has a lot of great vanilla flavor. Really helps to provide an additional richness to this bite. It's very flavorful. I will say though, it is quite sweet, even for a dessert. Those of you watching your sugar intakes are probably steer clear of this one. But if you love Mexican dessert flavors, especially that of a churro, you're really gonna like this one. And I happen to be a big fan of churros, so I really like this one. All right, everyone, now that's gonna do it for my dinner here at the Hash House of Go-Go at the Plaza Hotel, Las Vegas. Dinner for me and my buddy tonight came out to just under $270 before tip, and we really had a great time. The mac and cheese was my favorite appetizer of the day, and I really like that meatloaf sandwich from the handhelds. While the chicken and waffles is always gonna be good, I think the pot roast was my favorite dish of the night, and the cinnamon churro waffle dessert was very tasty. If you're staying here at the Plaza or you're looking forward to some Twisted Farm food, this is what you can expect here at Hash House of Go-Go. All right, my friends, now that's gonna do it for this Saturday video where I'm continuing my quest to vlog every restaurant on the Las Vegas Strip as well as downtown. Coming this Tuesday, I'm gonna be returning from a much more local place here in the Valley. Make sure you come back for that one. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great weekend, and I hope you enjoyed Vegas with me, Shin.
Bye.